हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू फिजिक्स वाला नेक्सस इंग्लिश बैच हाउ आर यू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स एंड आई होप यू एंजॉयड द प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑन स्टैटिस्टिक्स लेक्चर नंबर वन राइट पीपल वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ब्यूटिफुल कॉन्सेप्ट विच मेनी ऑफ यू फील दैट दे आर वेरी कन्फ्यूजिंग बट आई डोंट थिंक दैट फील विल बी कैरी फॉरवर्ड आफ्टर वॉचिंग द प्रीवियस क्लास right okay people so today is the lecture number 2 on statistics in the last class people we have discussed about measures of central tendency that is uh, mean and median we have discussed and then we went for measures of dispersion right uh, so we discussed range and then mean deviation and i told you in the last class only that we will be discussing about uh, standard deviation today right so in today's class mostly we'll be focusing on variance and standard deviation actually both are the same people in the same sense uh, just a square of one is other okay so nothing much to do no need to do different process for variance no need to do different process for standard deviation both are same okay just one step ahead and a few more applications as the time permits okay people so till the last class whatever we have discussed about the mean deviations and all we have some limitations for that why we cannot use that everywhere or why can't we get all the information about the given data using the mean deviations okay if you remember when we are doing mean deviations the very first thing we added all the deviations directly without any absolute value without making any absolute value we have added directly and we came to know that it is becoming zero no matter whatever we are uh no matter whatever the mean or median we taking the deviation is becoming zero and then to avoid that and to get some information about the data we went for the modulus or the absolute value of those functions absolute values for those data and from there we discussed mean deviation about mean about median for ungrouped data for grouped data for discrete frequency for continuous frequency all this we have discussed but people why are we making that as modulus why can't we make something else we're taking absolute value right but maybe if we take something else we might get more pre precise data then what can we do to avoid that sum to be zero in the last class we had taken absolute value that is one but what else can be done here you can see that people in a series where the degree of variability is very high the median is not a representative central tendency there's a mean deviation we had we are taking about mean deviation okay mean deviation about median calculated for such series cannot be fully relied the sum of the deviations from the mean okay minus sun, minus sin sigma that is where we have taken the absolute values is more than the sum of deviations from median therefore the mean deviation about the mean is not very scientific although we have taken all those mean deviations about mean about median but we are not getting the clear picture of the data okay thus in many cases mean deviation may give us unsatisfactory results also mean deviation is calculated on the base of absolute values right we are taking absolute values into consideration therefore cannot be subjected to further algebraic treatment this implies that we must have some other measure of dispersion standard deviation is such a measure okay people we are taking waiting absolute values although the values are negative but we are taking the absolute values for that so we are changing the actual data right and then we are moving forward but instead of doing that absolute values okay so let's move for making the squares why can't we take the squares right even making the squares make that positive okay making the squares and at last we we'll again come back to uh take some square roots then i think that will be helpful okay so recall that while calculating the mean deviation about the mean or median the absolute values of deviations were taken okay the absolute values were taken to give meaning to mean deviation otherwise deviations may cancel among themselves that is what i'm saying if you are not taking the absolute values the values are becoming zero the sum of all those values becomes zero so meaningless right so another way to overcome this difficulty which arose due to the science of deviations is to take squares of all the deviations obviously all these squares of deviations are non negative we know that squares are non negative okay so from here whenever we are talking about the coming slides okay when we are talking about deviations 
we don't take absolute values of deviations instead we take square of the deviation so this is what this lecture is completely about so from the coming slide whatever problems we are taking we are always considering the squares adding them finding the mean or about median about mean whatever it is whatever we're taking but we are not taking absolute values anymore we are taking squares and at last we'll again come back to the square root part okay understood everyone right so let's go into further deeper so this sigma sigma square we we call it a sigma square okay so uh, mean of the mean of the squares of deviations you find the deviations don't keep the absolute value take the squares of that after taking squares divide with one by n it is something it is nothing but the mean only mean of not deviations mean of not absolute deviations mean of a squares mean of squares of deviations and is denoted by sigma square okay we didn't we read it as a sigma this symbol is called sigma sigma right therefore the variance of n observations is given by so this sigma square is called variance not standard deviation sigma square is variance whereas sigma which will give you root over root over 1 by n into sigma xi minus x bar whole square so this is called standard deviation both have the same formulas just with square and square roots that's it if you have variance you can find standard deviation if you have standard deviation you can find variance nothing much nothing much about that okay people once again we will see that instead of taking the deviations directly instead of taking the absolute values of deviations we are coming to the new step that is we are taking the squares of deviations and then sum of all those and divided by n give the mean right so mean of mean of squares of all deviations remember mean of squares of all the deviations will give you sigma square which is variance the square root of that complete thing will give you standard deviation clear right so let's move forward okay so that is what sigma so this is the formula for standard deviation sigma is equal to root over 1 by n into sigma xi minus x bar whole square simple okay so let's take one example and you will understand more better about this people so find the variance of the following data variance means sigma square sigma square means 1 by n into mean of mean of sum of all the deviations sum of all the deviations that is see if you remember that terminology that is mean of mean of sum of sum of all squares of squares of deviations done no need to remember anything even if you forget the formula finding the mean of what of deviations of sum of sum of sum of what squares of so for what we need to take the squares deviations find deviations do square add them divide by n will give you standard will give you sigma square variance and root of that will give you standard deviation okay so we have a few example so 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 20 24 24 okay so if you carefully observe everything is uh, changed or has a difference of 2 from 6 to 8 to 10 to 12 okay so now we have few formulas that we need to uh, we need to take it off okay so when we are taking x bar x bar people we need to find x bar for this first of all we can do it in normal way however you want to do okay but uh, this is the process what we go for variance okay it will be more easy than the previous one so we take an assumed mean plus the sigma di by n into h h is the width we, we you know that so what is the assumed mean here what value can be taken as assumed mean some value between in between can you please tell me some value in between the data 6 or 8 or 10 or 12 anyone so if you carefully observe somewhere in between i can take 14 okay you can also take 16 people no worries see you can take 14 or 16 no worries you can take you can even assume 22 24 also answer will be the same no problem okay but in between 14 or 16 so i prefer with going with 14 you can also try with going with 16 not an issue okay that is assumed mean 
assumed mean is 14 okay plus sigma di people first of all we need to find di okay this is this 14 is nothing but the assumed mean okay xi minus a by 2 2 means h 2 is the value of h okay so xi minus 14 by 2 6 minus 14 minus 8 minus 8 by 2 is a minus 4 correct or wrong 6 minus 14 minus 8 minus 8 by 2 minus 4 8 minus 14 minus 6 minus 6 minus 6 by 2 is minus 3 10 minus 14 minus 4 by 2 12 minus 14 minus 1 14 minus 14 by 2 0 16 minus 14 1 this is uh, 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 okay so sigma di sigma di just add all this uh, minus 4 plus 4 gets cancelled minus 3 plus 3 minus 2 plus 2 minus 1 plus 1 only 5 is left over okay i said you in the previous class also when we are doing the same kind of problem i told you not always this sigma di will be zero okay so here it is a 5 by n what is the total number of elements 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 5 by 10 into h h is also 2 so 14 plus 10 by 10 is 1 so that will give you 15 so x bar x bar is 15 people we take that assumed value assumed value to ease the answer to ease the process if you don't want to take that it's okay you can find the mean of all this that's not an issue but it'll be easy if you do like this it's very easy like in find sigma di majority of them will cancel or will get a very small value to calculate okay that's the reason that we are going with now xi minus x bar xi minus x bar 6 minus 15 6 minus 15 minus 9 okay keep it negative nothing no issues the next step is you need to go for square okay 8 minus 15 minus 7 10 minus 15 minus 5 12 minus 3 14 minus 15 minus 1 16 minus 15 1 18 plus 15 18 minus 15 3 20 minus 15 5 22 minus 15 7 and 24 minus 15 is 9 okay my place is not sufficient please write it properly squares of this 9 square 81 7 square 49 5 square 25 9 1 1 9 25 49 81 so the thing is add all this add all this and divide with n your answer will be there with you that is a sigma square okay so 81 81 is 2 times 49 2 times 25 2 times 9 plus 1 10 all these numbers are repeated twice again okay. so 9 plus 1 10 plus 15 8 4 12 that 14 15 16 165 twos how much is that uh six two ten twelve thirteen two thirty so that sigma square will give you two thirty by what is n and is the total number of elements observations right so ten so sigma square will be twenty three so that is variance that is variance if you want sigma sigma will be root twenty three so once again please cross check that if there is any mistake let me check from my side too uh we have done some mistake i should not i think that should be so 330 that should be 330 i had done a mistake in calculation sorry for that right so that should be 330 and sigma square 330 by 10 so that becomes a 33 so sigma will become root that is although it is not asked this becomes a standard deviation so the question is asked about variance the variance answer will be 33 clear not a difficult thing okay so whenever we are taking the group data i mean the tables like this people we take assumed mean as one value from there we calculate x bar so that it will be easy for calculation okay this is the other shortcut method remember that we have discussed last class if you are not comfortable like this you can go directly how we have calculated x bar for a random data for ungrouped data you can go in that way also okay right next okay the same formulas we are having so standard deviation of a discrete frequency distribution so now people 
we discussed for ungrouped data the question that we have discussed just now is an ungrouped data so now the question is about discrete frequency distribution you know that x1 f1 x2 f2 x3 y f3 same process instead of x we will be taking the deviations will be there but into fi into the frequencies okay you can see that so xi minus x bar whole square the same deviation square of the deviation but now we multiply with its frequency because the frequency gives us how many times that particular observation is repeated so that many number of times we should again add them when we are taking the sigma so we once again go with fi same process same process nothing much same whatever we had done previously just multiply with fi you're done okay people actually speaking the standard uh, the sorry the discrete frequency distribution is actually the same as ungrouped data but here the number of observations are being repeated by f number of times the frequency number of times just we keep that f that's it the remaining both are same okay all of them will be same okay right and uh, the total n will be nothing but the sum of all the frequencies so let's move forward okay so find the variance and the standard deviation of the following data don't worry variance and standard deviation will be done with one go okay you know variance square root of variance will be standard deviation okay so we have xifi the sum of this is 30 so this will give you the total capital n or sigma fi okay in the formula fi into xi 43 is 12 8 5 is 40 99 17 5 how much is 17 5 7 5 is 35 5 1 is 5 6 7 8 right 85 24 is 80, 24, 3 is 72, 32, 1 is 31. Okay, next. Xi minus X bar. So the problem now is to find X bar. So please try to do that. So how to take X bar, people? Please do it. Okay. Everyone. X bar is sigma Fi Xi by N. Sigma Fi Xi by N. So tell me what is sigma Fi Xi. So add all this. Add all this and tell me sigma Fi Xi. 12 plus 40, 52, uh, this is 52, 52 plus 100, 152, 151, 151, and 85, 80, this is uh, 103. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 8, 16, 16 plus 5, 21, 2, 3, 4. I got 4, 19. Did I do any mistake? 9, 10, 11. 11 plus 5 16 17 19 i think it's correct uh this wrong this is 32. right so 32 so that will be 104 so the total is 420 okay sigma fi xi the sum of this is 420 so 420 divided by 30. okay so that will give you x bar x bar is a 420 divided by 30 so three ones three how many times three 14 times right so x bar is equal to 14 x bar is equal to 14 okay fine we will see here so this will be 14 and n is equal to 30 fi xi 420 that's correct so sigma fi into xi minus x bar whole square that we need to find okay so now as you have x bar do x i minus x bar x i minus x bar tell me x i minus x bar 4 minus 14 is minus 10 8 minus 14 is minus 8 minus 14 is minus 6 11 minus 14 is minus 11 minus 14 is minus 3 17 minus 14 is plus 3 20 and 14 is 7 20 and 14 is 6 24 and 14 is 10 and 32 and 14 32 and 14 how much is that 32 and 14 this will be 10 12 and uh, 18 right 14 and 18 right so right that becomes 32 so that becomes 18 all right so now if you add all this minus 10 plus 10 gets cancelled minus 6 plus 6 minus 3 plus 3 so we are just left with 18 xi minus x bar okay nice extra xi minus x bar whole square 100 this is 36 this is 9 this is 9 this is 36 this is 100 18 square, how much is that? I don't remember. 374, 376, something. 864, 818, 8 plus 16, 14, 18, 4, 12, 324, right? Cross check that once again, people, please. 
So, Fi into Xi minus X bar whole square. Fi 3 into 100 is 300. 5 into 36 is 180. 9 nines 81. 5 nines 45. 36 fours. 36 fours. How much is that? 24, 4, 3 is 12, then 14, 144. Okay. Next, uh, 3 into 100 is 300. And 1, uh, sorry, into, we had on a mistake, right? F I into X I minus X bar whole square. F I into X I minus X bar whole square. So, uh, sorry, yeah, that's it. 3 into 100 is 300. 1 to 324 is 324. So, add all this, you'll get sigma F I into X I minus X bar whole square. It may be looking like it is difficult but people only calculations we are not making it so complicated formulas here okay simple formula simple calculations so just find out this and your problem will be done okay so you'll be having this when you add so divide that with n to get a variance understood and once you get standard once you get variance the root of this complete answer will give you a standard deviation clear everyone okay so sigma f i into x i minus x bar whole square just add all this and then divide with 30 you will get your answer right next okay so standard deviation of a continuous frequency distribution where x bar is the mean of the distribution people now we are talking about continuous frequency distribution is it something different from what we had discussed same but remember that we are taking the mid values of that uh, intervals when we have 10 to 20 so the mid value we taking as 15 as xi remember right so x bar is the mean of the distribution and the remaining things will follow the same so and we have one more formula for standard deviation people okay this is also used sometimes because this will be easy when you directly have sigma fi xi value okay if directly if you have that value it will be easy to solve in this method okay so 1 by n into root over n times of sigma fi into xi square sigma fi into xi square is only for xi minus sigma fi xi whole square okay this is actually uh, the sum of all the elements multiplied by the frequencies like that xi fi x1 f1 x2 f2 so we'll already get that value in the table so just a square of that sum and square of that will give you this value okay so this is one more formula from that main formula we can also derive that which we are not going into derivation now but this is one more formula to find a standard deviation okay right so calculate the mean variance and standard deviation for the following distribution so can you please help me with that say midpoint this is what xi in a continuous frequency distribution we take care of xi the remaining process is the same the remaining method is the same please do that i'll give you two minutes of time okay people i'll give you two minutes of time so please try to solve as much as possible do it fast. all right people so last 10 seconds okay so 
let's quickly look into that people so tell me what happened what is midpoints you know that what is fi xi you know that for x bar okay we will see that once you get fi xi we can easily calculate that value okay so midpoint 30 to 40 is 35 this 45 then 55 then 65 75 85 95 that's it okay fine people one thing you should always remember in continuous distribution we don't have a specific xi right so we always we always tend to take the middle value as xi okay do remember that in all the methods okay right all right so now find f i into x i so 3 into 35 is 105 right 45 sevens how much is 45 sevens 7 5 35 7 4 28 29 30 31 315 people yes it will take some time but please try to do it properly it will be very easy okay 55 12 12 55 so 12 5 60 12 5 60 so that becomes 6 60 right next 15 65 so 65 into 15, 5 is 25, 6 5 is 30, 32 and 65, 5, 7, 9. 9, 75, please cross check that. I may do some mistake when I'm calculating super fast, okay? Next, 75, 8, 75, 8, 8, 5 is 40, 7, 8, 30, 7 is 56, 56 plus 4, 60, 600. Next, 85, 3 is, 85, 3 is, 5, 3 is 15, 8, 3 is 24, 25, 255. 95 twos that becomes a 190 okay so please quickly add all this this 105 not 165 this 105 so please add all this and tell me what you're getting tell me 105 315 660 975 all the backers people back there i think it will take very few seconds for you but i'm not very com comfortable with that okay so one two three four five was 20 okay so 2, 3, uh, 2, 3, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 6, 9, 9 plus 7, 16, 16 plus 5, 21, 21 plus 9, 13. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 and 6, 13, 13 plus 9, 22, 22 plus 6, 28, 28, 30, 31. So I got it as 3,100. I'm not very sure, but please cross check that, people. Okay. So now... Uh, we need to go for x bar we need to have x bar that becomes x bar will give you 3100 by the total number of frequencies that is 50 3100 by 50 okay so that will give you tell me 310 by 5 or into 2 by 2 i, I do in this method so that becomes 620 by 10 that will give you 62 x bar is 62 once again please cross check that okay so xi minus x bar whole square so 35 minus 62 whole square oh my god it's becoming so complicated but yes you need to do that people you don't have any other choice so 62 minus 35 35 uh, 25 will become 27 27 square i guess 27 square how much is that 729 right so please look into that people 27 square should be 729 right next uh 45 minus 62 45 minus 62 becomes 17 17 square can someone tell me what is 17 square uh 17 17 7 289 i guess okay let me see that 7 7 49 7 1 7 8 9 10 11 17 that becomes 289 okay i forgot that i remember that i forgot okay 55 minus 62 becomes 7 7 square 49 okay 65 minus 62 is 3, 3 square is 9, good. 75 minus 62, that will again give me 75 minus 62, how much is that? Uh, that is 8 plus 5, 13, so 13 square. 13 square is 169, please cross check that. Is that, is that the same you are getting people? Next, 13, next 20, 13 means next 23, 23 square. 23 square how much is 23 square 529 23 23 is 3 3 is 9 3 2 6 uh, 3 2 6 3 2 is 4 9 12 529 okay that will give you 529 what about the next uh, this is 23 33 square uh, 33, 33 3 is 99 99 
9.8. How much is that, people? 10, 1089. That will give you 1089. Fine. Right. So xi minus x bar whole square is done. So now fi into xi minus x bar whole square. fi into so this is fi. So 3 into 1, 729. 7 into 289. People, it is a bit complicated calculation, but not a difficult one. Okay. So please calculate that quickly. 3 into 729, 7289. Do it fast. Let me erase all these. Let me erase all these, whichever are not required for now. Right. Right. So find F I into X I minus X bar whole square quickly. Okay, people. So find all this in sum, you will be getting ten thousand fifty. Okay. So please cross check that people should get it as ten thousand fifty. And now to get uh, to get people mean mean is already and to get variance. Okay. Variance is 10,050 by the total 50. So how much is that? Please try to find that. 52s and 51s. So 201. If I'm not wrong, that value should be 201. And the standard deviation is a root or variance. So two, root or 201, it will be around uh, 14, 14 point something. Okay. You can leave that approximately as a fractions, as a decimal values. Okay. 14.1 or 14.2 fine people so this is how you do mean variance and standard deviation for a continuous frequency distribution okay so remember always xi is always a midpoint xi is always a midpoint okay right next one find the standard deviation for the following data okay people standard deviation please do that it's a discrete frequency very easy question Okay, people, so now it's better if we can go with other formula. What is the other formula we're having? Can someone tell me? So, for the standard deviation, we have already discussed the other formula. Let me go back if I can try to find that. Yeah, this one. Okay, so 1 by n into n times of sigma fi xi square. Okay, so this formula will be very helpful for discrete frequency. Okay, minus sigma fi xi whole square. Okay, so let us write that once again. Tell me, people, 1 by n into root over sigma n fi xi square. This one, right? Yeah. This one. 1 by n into n times of sigma fi xi square minus sigma fi xi. So let's try to bring those values first of all. Let's try to bring those values first of all, and then we will try to do that. Okay. So what is f i into x i? Do it. What is f i into x i? 21, 8 tenths, 80, 13 fifteens. How much is that? 15 twelve, uh, 180, then 195 maybe. Once again, cross check that. This is uh, 180, and 23 is 6. 6 3 is 18, 3 2 is 6, 7. Sure? No. 6 2 is 12, 13, 138, sorry. 138 okay so add all this do we need sigma fi xi definitely we need that right sigma fi xi whole square fi xi whole square so add all these to get the sigma tell me uh, 80 plus 21 101 then 195 then 180 and then 138 8 plus 5 13 plus 1 14 9 plus 1 10 10 plus uh, 10 20 21 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 614, okay, I, I expect that there will be big values in the coming step, but it's okay people, you can do that, go for xi square, we'll go for xi square, so xi square, 3, 3 square 9, 8 square 64, 13 square 169, 18 square, how much is that, we have already discussed just now, 324, I'm not sure, 23 square, we haven't done that. 23, 23, 3 is uh, 9, 3, 2, 6, 3, 2, 6, 3, 2, 4. We have done that. I forgot. 529. Right. Fi into xi square. So 7, 9, 63. Don't. 10 into 64, 640. Easy. 1, 6, 9, 15. We need to calculate that. 324. This is 3, 2, 4, 0. 529, 6, 6, 
नाइन फिफ्टी फोर सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व ट्वेल्व प्लस फाइव सेवेंटीन सिक्स फाइव थर्टी थर्टी वन दट बिकम्स थ्री वन सेवन फोर राइट एंड वन सिक्सटी नाइन फिफ्टीन वन सिक्सटी नाइन फिफ्टीन नाइन फाइव फोर्टी फाइव सिक्स फाइव थर्टी प्लस फोर थर्टी फोर थर्टी फोर फाइव वन फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट देन वन सिक्सटी नाइन फाइव थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन टू फाइव थ्री फाइव टू फाइव थ्री फाइव सो डू वी नीड सिग्मा एफ एक्स ए होल स्क्वेयर यस ओके सो सिग्मा इज रूट ओवर वन बाय एन टाइम्स ऑफ एन इन टू दिस सिग्मा सिग्मा एफ आई एक्स आई स्क्वेयर माइनस सिग्मा एफ आई एक्स आई होल स्क्वेयर सो यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट वन बाय फोर्टी एट इंटू रूट ओवर वॉट इज एन फोर्टी एट इंटू सिग्मा एफ आई एक्स आई होल स्क्वेयर ओके सो दिस वैल्यू वॉट एवर इट इज एम टेकिंग एस एक्स फोर ना सो फोर्टी इंटू एक्स माइनस सिग्मा एफ आई एक्स आई सिक्स फोर्टीन सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टीन स्क्वेयर सो प्लीज कैलकुलेट दिस एंड टेल मी वॉट विल बी योर आंसर देर कैलकुलेट दैट पीपल सो थ्री वन सेवन फोर थ्री वन सेवन फोर थ्री टू फोर जीरो टू फाइव थ्री फाइव सिक्स फोर्टी एंड सिक्स थ्री थ्री सो फाइव फोर नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व सेवन फोर इलेवन ट्वेल्व प्लस थ्री फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन प्लस टेन ट्वेंटी फाइव नेक्स्ट टू प्लस वन थ्री 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 प्लस सॉरी टू प्लस वन थ्री थ्री प्लस टू फाइव प्लस फाइव प्लस फाइव प्लस फाइव टेन टेन प्लस सिक्स सिक्सटीन थ्री सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन नाइन सिक्स फाइव टू वन सेकेंड प्लीज क्रॉस चेक दैट योर वैल्यूज ओके पीपल लेट मी चेक दैट यस दैट्स करेक्ट नाइन सिक्स फाइव टू नाइन सिक्स फाइव टू इज करेक्ट सो दिस वैल्यू विल बी वन बाय फोर्टी एट let me erase this complete thing right so 1 by 48 into root over 48 into uh that is 9652 to 48 9652 minus 614 whole square so you need to calculate that to get your final answer and should that becomes your standard deviation all right people see sometimes it is it is a lengthy calculations yes that's correct i agree that but people you need to do that you cannot skip that stating that it is complicated okay so definitely a question of this kind will come in examination all right so what else we are having next okay okay so there is one more method that we can find the variance and standard deviation because now in the method what we have done we have we haven't taken any assumed mean okay people the answers will be is if we take some assumed mean as somewhere in between the data and through that we assume the new means okay we we try to bring some new values okay so let the assumed value be a and the scale be reduced to 1 by h times if the gap is If the class is like ten to twenty, okay, so we are trying to reduce the class by ten, ten, ten times, okay. So h being the width of the class intervals. So now we need to have the new value y i as a new observation, which is x i minus a by h. Okay, so let us take a question on that. Let's try to solve with that. So now instead of wherever we have f i x i, we'll go with y i. Okay, we are trying to reduce the numbers. Okay. because just now you saw how lengthy the question is and don't forget that we need to multiply with h that is the width of the interval okay people what what is what is the actual meaning of this multiplying with h is see uh, like you are discussing uh, some business in between 100 uh, between uh, 1000 and 1100 let's say okay you are having some negotiations with something you are discussing some calculation with 1000 and 100 you know that you are discussing at an interval of 100 right so instead of doing there you come down to 1 to 11 or 1 to 10 whatever the equivalent we are trying to reduce the scales and again at the last we are trying to multiply with whatever the class width is are you understanding we are trying to bring the same data into lower group in the with the lower numbers and once we get the answer here we again multiply with the width of the class okay that is how that is what meaning of this assumed means and all okay 
All right. So let us take this question once again. So calculate mean variance and the standard deviation. Now we will go with the process of taking assumed mean and all. Okay. So people, tell me what can we take the assumed mean as? It is between 32 and 90. So this is uh, 35. The middle, val middle values are 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95. So what value can be taken as uh, the assumed mean? Okay. Somewhere in between. So let us consider that value as 65. 65 becomes assumed mean. Are you understanding? Okay. People, you can go with 55 or you can go with 75. It is assumed value. You can take any value. But taking the middle value will ease out the process. Okay. Right. So now, why i becomes xi minus 65 by 10 assumed mean? Why i becomes xi minus 65 by 10? Okay. So we're trying to reduce all the numbers. And from here, the actual problem starts. Okay, so tell me xi minus 65 by 10. So 35 minus 65 is uh, 35 minus 65. How much is that? Minus 30 minus 30 by 10 is minus 3. 45 minus 65 minus 20 by 10 minus 2. 55 minus 65 minus 1. This is 0. This is 1. This is 2. This is 3. See, all the numbers become very, very, very small. And uh, yi squared, this becomes 9. This becomes a 4, this becomes a 1, this becomes 0, 1, 4, 9. Fi into yi. So 3 into minus 3, minus 9. 7 fi into yi. Okay. 7 to minus 3 is minus 14. 12 into minus 1 is minus 12. 15 to 0 is 0. 8 1 is 8. 3 4 is 12. 3 4 is 12. Right. So 2 into 3. 2 into 3 is 6. 2 into 3 is 6. Correct. F i y i now f i into y i square y i square 9 3 is 27 9 3 is 27 and complete this process and you have the formula with you wherever in the previous formula we used x i now we need to multiply with f y i and don't forget that we need to multiply with the 10 at the end okay so from there you will get this process okay so we have f i into y i square we need to find sigma f i y i square and we can proceed understood the complete data is here <coughs> see now that table became very small and just like that we can find all these values just in one or two minutes but if you compare the previous case what we have done that's the reason i have left in between i mean i asked you to do the remaining things this is so complicated this is so complicated we are getting a lot of big values right people so there are methods that we need to consider where, wherever we can try to reduce the steps. Right. Next. Okay. So find the mean and variance for the data 6, 7, 10, 11, 13, 4, 13, 4, 8, 12. So mean is the same people. It is a ungrouped data, sum of all the elements by, num by number of elements. So 6 plus 1, 13, 13, 23, 23. Uh, 25, 35, 35, 38, uh, 38, 48, and just add all those and divide with n. Okay, so please tell me what will be the answer quickly. It's a simple thing. Just add them and divide. And now, how to go for variance? People, we have already discussed that methods. We have discussed already how to get the variance. Okay, so please uh, try to solve all these students. Not a big task, I'm saying. Okay, people, once again, do you remember what is the variance for ungrouped data? Let us go back if you don't remember. In the very, very, very beginning, we have discussed what is the variance of ungrouped data. Remember, we have discussed like this. We have taken di is equal to xi minus 14 by 2. Then deviations, xi minus x bar whole square. People, the only thing that we have uh, differentiated between mean and variance is, there we have taken deviations of absolute values. Here we have taken deviations of uh, squares of deviations. Mean of squares of deviations. That's the only thing that should be there in your mind. And the remaining things will be done by you. Okay. Right. So, people, so what else we are having? Right, so this is mean and medians. 
next find the mean and variance for first and natural numbers people this is important for first and natural numbers so tell me what we what are the unnatural numbers so 1 2 3 4 so on till n so how many numbers are there n numbers sum of all these numbers do you remember people sum of or sum of first n natural numbers if you remember it is n into n plus 1 by 2 we have already discussed that as sigma n if not use arithmetic progression concept they are in ap apply some 10 terms you will get that formula okay so we already have the sum so what is the mean mean is n into n plus 1 by 2 by the number of elements n so the mean will be n plus 1 by 2 such a simple thing but for variance you need to go for few more steps okay right so that is one beautiful application you can try people so first 10 multiples of 3 so 3 6 9 so you can see that there is a equal width of 3 okay and so on and so on till 30 people after you solve this i i just want to have some some question for you try to find what is the mean and variance of 1 2 3 so on till, till tell because in the previous question you have the formula for that you will get the formula for that in that n <coughs> substitute 10 in that n substitute 10 so you will get the mean and variance for this this is exactly three times of this this is exactly three times of that okay so in this try to find what is mean what is the variance and try to make some comparison between these two because when we are multiplying the data with a number with a constant multiple what happens to the mean will it change what happens to the variance will it change if it changes how it changes either it is becoming into three or square it is becoming square of something else or it is becoming root of something else so try to bring some comparisons then you will understand more clearly okay you need to analyze yourself find mean and variance we have done the same type of problems mean and standard using using shortcut method okay assume the, assume the mean and all <coughs> next so one more once again right so all these things we have discussed people so you have few more questions that you can try that will be left over in the ppt for you to try okay people so we have discussed variance we have discussed standard deviation we have discussed uh, some applications on all this okay such a beautiful concept i'm saying people statistics many of you feel that it is very 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 difficult but i'm saying literally if you remember just three four formulas done your complete statistics is done okay just remember the formula according to the formula you make your table okay this is the formula so i need to have sigma xifi so I, i'll write xifi in the table i'll try to bring the sigma or I need to have xi minus x bar whole square. In the formula it is there. So bring xi minus x bar whole square. And for continuous, you should remember that xi means the middle values. Okay. So width of the class, h is important. And um, in that example, what we had taken in the previous class, the lower limit of the median class and uh, width of the median class, cumulative frequency of the class before the median class. So all these kind of examples are important. Okay. People. So I hope you got a thorough idea of the statistics more applications and things we will be going to discuss in the coming classes okay so as of now for uh, statistics that's all people we are going to end this chapter for now and in the next class of mine i will be dealing with uh, heights and distances okay so thank you so much people stay tuned to get the next lecture thank you